Он вас нормально видит. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I apologize. We're starting a few minutes late. It is, as I might remind you, a minor miracle that we can all be together. <laughs> so thanks to the, the powers of the internet, we're all here in a little Zoom space. So welcome, welcome. Great to have everyone here. We'll give it just a minute for those numbers um, to tick up so everybody can get into the Zoom space. In the meantime, please uh, use the chat to say hello and tell us where you are watching from. I'm also going to send out a really quick one question poll, one of our, the parts of our, um, our, the funding that supports this program means that we need to know where you're watching from. So do us a favor and answer that one quick question. Great, wonderful. And if you're going to say hello in the chat, do use the drop down menu to tell to select uh, everyone so we can all see. We see folks coming from Minneapolis and Cincinnati and New York, Duluth and Grand Marais. Wonderful. Hudson Valley, Northeast Minneapolis, Iceland. Awesome. <laughs> wonderful. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever applies here. All right, Amsterdam, Mineral Point, Wisconsin. I know, wouldn't we all like to have donuts from the world's best donuts this morning? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's great to have folks here. California. Ooh, it is early in California. All right, Joe Wood from Grand Marais and from Turkey. <laughs> Vermont. Wow. So fun to have all the Germany, Nova Scotia. Wow. That's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Lucky. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Good morning or whatever applies. Good day to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jessa Frost. I'm the program director at a little folk school called North House located in Grand Marais, Minnesota, which is um, just a tiny bit south of the Canadian border on Lake Superior. Uh, if you haven't joined us before, this North House is a place uh, that was created 25 years ago. Uh, and the vision of the founders was that craft was a way to bring people together, to build community, to encourage lifelong learning and cultural cross-connection. I think when they founded the school, they might have imagined that that would happen locally and regionally and maybe occasionally nationally. I think they could hardly imagine that we would gather over a hundred people from I don't even know how many countries um, on a February morning to hear stories of textile craft. So it's really wonderful that uh, this can happen. So a few things. We are hosting a series of these webinars as part of our celebration of fibers. We've had students on campus all week uh, doing sewing and weaving uh, rias and doing Nuno felting. We'll be joined by even more students starting tomorrow who will be weaving on floor looms and uh, doing needle felting and bead embroidery. It's really fun to uh, see the breadth of textile crafts that people are able to, to do. We will be hosting two, three more webinars, one at 10 o'clock this morning, our time with our guest, Tina Sovkina from uh, Russia. We'll be hosting one at noon with Anmor Sunbo, who will be joining us from Norway. And then next Friday, we'll have one last webinar in our series coming from right from Grand Marais from one of our resident artists. Uh, I would encourage you, if you haven't been to North House or are unfamiliar with our school, we just posted all of our coursework online at northhouse.org for the entire year. And so even if you can't make it to Grand Marais this year, you can take a look and check out all of the opportunities and maybe scheme on a trip to see us someday. Um, we also are open, we'll be opening all those classes as well as an opportunity to apply for scholarships uh, here early uh, next week. And so please uh, consider that and spread the word to anyone who you think would like to gather in a classroom and learn to make things. So a tiny bit of Zoom housekeeping for you. We will be using the question and answer format for this, um, for this presentation. We'll take questions at the end. And so if you have a question pop into your mind, you can use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. 
you're watching on a tablet or a phone, you might have to tap it to make it show up. Um, but it looks like two little text message bubbles. That's a great place to put your questions because they are easy for us to keep track of. If you have other comments or um, things to add, you can put that into the chat. We'll keep an eye on there. We will drop some links into the chat as well um, that as they come up. So I think that's all of my housekeeping. We will post a recording of this webinar on our website, northhouse.org, um, maybe as soon as this afternoon, um, but certainly within the next day or two. So if you have to leave or if you think of somebody who would love to watch it, it will be available on our website. Uh, the last thing is the presentation will be closed captioned. Um, I think that is happening. And so uh, if that would be helpful, you can check those out on the bottom of your screen. Okay, enough of me. It's my pleasure to welcome Mary Sanarud, who has been teaching felt making at North House for many years now. And she's here to tell us more about our guest today. Mary? Thank you, Jessa. Wow, hi everybody. This is such a joy to be able to come together. Uh, one of the gifts of this crazy pandemic time, I think, being able to join from around the world. Um, as Jessa mentioned, it's morning here, but it's evening uh, for Dinara. It's um, 8 a.m. Minnesota time and it's 8 p.m. her time, which means she's halfway around the world. So I thought we could start by quickly looking at a map for those of us who might need to place ourselves um, and figure out just where Kyrgyzstan is. So as you can see on the map there, um, it's in Central Asia, surrounded by Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and China. And it's a beautiful high mountain country. Um, it reminded me a bit of the place where I first met Dinara, which was in New Mexico. Um, she came in 2012 to teach a traditional Kyrgyz felt rug making class with three other women. And it was a two week course um, where we were over a hundred people. And it was an incredible experience for me. I fell absolutely in love with the rich traditions of felt making from Kyrgyzstan and the absolute joy that comes from making felt with so many people. Um, and also the ability to send blessings to those that you love through a felt rug. It was an incredible experience. And I then traveled to Kyrgyzstan for three months and lived with one of the instructors uh, who had been teaching that class and have been back a couple more times now to study felt making. It's taken my life over in the most wonderful way. And I've spent my time doing what I can to share what I've learned from my Kyrgyz teachers. And Dinara is one of these amazing women who has dedicated her life to helping sustain the knowledge and skills of Kyrgyz felt makers, both the traditions, she sustains women in the present and also for future generations. And she's done so much that I wanted to read to you um, from her bio. She says, Donata Chochenbaeva, she's an artist, a book designer, an expert on intangible cultural heritage and crafts of Kyrgyzstan. She has led the Central Asia Crafts Support Association it's an organization that unites and supports over 5,000 craftsmen across the region. She coordinates the UNESCO World Crafts Council program. It's an award of excellence for handcraft products in Central Asia. She established the International Festival of Traditional Crafts and Culture. It's recognized today as one of the most successful markets for craftsmen and tourists in the region. She's established a regional team of trainers which trained hundreds of craftsmen within and out of the country. She's worked on an initiative to include Kyrgyz felt carpets into the UNESCO list of intangible cultural heritage. And these are crafts which UNESCO recognizes that are in need of urgent safeguarding. She represented Central Asia at the World Crafts Council. She's published a book on Shirdaks, which has won numerous awards. And this is a short list of her work. She is a tireless advocate for preservation of Kyrgyz traditional crafts. And I feel very lucky to be able to help welcome her to North House today. So wherever you are, however we do this on Zoom, please help me welcome Dinara Chochambaiva. <laughs> Thank you, Dinara. Kosh Kelling is there. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm, I'm very happy to be with you and to represent our art of felt. 
uh, Kyrgyz traditional felt making. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, it will be good to start with this uh, video which uh, we prepared oh, for UNESCO. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I ask? Can I ask uh, Jessa to show that video? Yes. One second. Sorry. You think you have it all queued up, and then it yes, that video changes it things, makes... doesn't it? <laughs> all right. Here we go. Since olden days, the Kyrgyz people used to live in the Alato Mountains. From generation to generation, they have been transferring the art of manufacturing alakis and shardak, felt carpets, which are considered to be the most valuable heritage of the nation. For centuries, the life of the people was related to cattle breeding and roaming from one pasture to another, and almost all house utensils were light, soft, and colorful. Alakis and shirdak are manufactured of poor sheep wool. Alakis production comes from the depths of centuries, the fifth, sixth millennia before Christ. It means that felt appeared when people tamed sheep, and thus felt carpets became articles of life necessity. Wool carpets always protected people from errors of enemies, drying up heat, penetrating colds and other hardships. Private world of the people living in a surprisingly beautiful and at the same time severe environment, which at times are full of unexpectedness, is extraordinarily rich, deep, and mysterious. Alakis is an ancient epic form of a felt carpet. Wool of Kyrgyz sheep cut in early spring is cleaned, washed out, shaken up to light wooliness or is combed. Then this wool is cut with scissors and is put on a mat in regular intervals. Then an ornament, a wool dyed in different colors, is carefully put on this woolen layer. It is poured with boiling water and densely rolled in a mat. Then the mat is rammed with feet, and the stronger they do it, the denser will be the felt. This procedure requires strong physical efforts of people or force of domestic riding cattle, as a rule a horse or a donkey. Then alakis is taken out from the mat, and several women strongly ram it with their elbows. Shirdak carpet is produced in mosaic technique. Felt carpets in such technique were discovered in the Pazarek archaeological site and were recognized as the most ancient kind of the felt items. The techniques of manufacturing shirdak are much more difficult. Frequently one year is required for preparatory works. Two multi-colored felt layers are used to produce shirdak. They are put together. An ornament is put on the top felt and then it is carefully cut out from the both layers. Then the two patterns are put in one beautiful ornament and their edges are sewed. After that the sewed pattern is put on the basis of shirdak made as a rule of black felt and the whole carpet is kilted together. Felt copies are created with skillful hands of women, reflecting their dreams, artistic perception of the world, their aspiration for the future, love and hopes that did not come true. And all this finds reflection in the ornament, which uh, has brought certain information to us from the past. Shirdak is considered to be the most important and valuable article of a bride's dowry. A name of a master who made beautiful Shirdak is transferred by word of mouth. The 
The most of the ornamental motifs are rooted back in the ancient time and reflect Kyrgyz people's aesthetic perception of natural environment with which they always lived in harmony and their cosmogonic outlook as well. Color combination of carpet have emotional and meaningful significance as well. Such color combinations as blue-red, black-white, brown-yellow mean dramatic confrontation and at the same time harmony of two life sources, sky and earth, male and female, light and darkness, good and evil. The fact that ornaments were used in old times to tell secret information is testified by legends and fairy tales. Since olden days, uh, this craft has been continuously transferred from mother to daughter, from skilled artisans of senior generations to young ones. However, the modern life has radically changed perception and relations, suppressing those spiritual values uh, which have always represented the wealth of the nation. Cheap Chinese synthetic carpets have become fashionable nowadays, although they are mostly made of unhealthy components. They are popularly used in an interior of a Kyrgyz house unifying life of the people. Certainly among young Kyrgyz girls uh, there are those uh, who are seriously interested in learning the craft of manufacturing ecologically clean alakis and shirdak, which used to be broadly used by our ancestors. However, today no one can teach it anywhere. Thus the senior generation, which was engaged in the unique traditional craft, uh, has been disappearing together with the knowledge of technology of its manufacturing. The continuity of the generations is being interrupted. We lose our cultural heritage in making traditional felt carpets every year, every day. If to compare what we had 20, 10, even 5 years ago and nowadays, we can see how fast this process is going. Danger of traceless loss uh, threatens Alakis especially. Practically, you cannot meet them in big cities and in towns. Today, with development of tourism in the country, our shirdaks, produced by masters manually, definitely cause big interest of foreign visitors. Despite very high prices, they all are well recognized and are in demand among tourists. But it does not say the situation characterized with reduction of carpet manufacturing. Shirdaks made of natural wool are much more expensive than synthetic carpets. But so far, the local people as a rule choose what is cheaper and do not think about the heritage of our ancestors. Festivals and exhibitions of felt carpets are regularly carried out uh, with support of various international organizations. These activities force the government and the civil society of the country to pay attention and to take care of this problem. Of course, it is not sufficient in the situation when every day the life current carries away the knowledge of this craft from us, like rough water carries away a tree leaf in a prompt stream. We are losing our Kyrgyz intangible heritage, our national spiritual value. In the near future, the state should develop a complex of measures aimed at preserving Alakis and Shirdak. And these measures should be implemented as soon as possible. After all, the art of creating felt carpets is the great heritage transferred from one generation to another as a holy symbol of the nation. And we must do our best to save up this value. Thank you very much. Uh, this video was prepared by our organization, Central Asia Craft Support Association's Resource Center in Kyrgyzstan in 2010. In 2012, this uh, art of uh, uh, traditional, uh, of making traditional uh, felt carpets, uh, alakis and shirdak was included into the list of uh, intangible cultural heritage of UNESCO 
which, uh, which is under uh, the danger of being disappeared. You know, it is uh, this year, it will be 20 years left uh, after, uh, past after uh, this in, in include, inclusion. And uh, what can we they, uh, say today that, uh, you know, Alakis, uh, unfortunately, uh, maybe uh, totally disappeared uh, from uh, our ordinary life, but it uh, was transformed into other forms. And Shirdak uh, has developed, uh, and uh, fortunately, it, it became very popular. And not only in Kyrgyzstan, not, not only in our uh, internal uh, touristic market, but also uh, it became very popular uh, in the world market. Mm, of course, it is not enough to survive uh, for this uh, art of uh, uh, felt carpet, but uh, I hope that uh, it will uh, it will go uh, it will be developed more and uh, hope it will be um, it will be more um, it will be adapted uh, more to the contemporary uh, market uh, demand and now i'd like to continue uh, my uh, talk and uh, to go to uh, my presentation So Kyrgyz felt in the past, present, and future traditions, problems, and perspectives. So uh, Kyrgyz Republic uh, is an independent state. Nara, I'm sorry to, there we go. Uh, we were seeing a blank screen there. Do you see? Do you see? We do see it. Yeah, it maybe needs to be so in a full screen mode. So, but this would work too if we need to do it this way. It never works as well as it did five minutes before the presentation starts. Is it fine now? Uh, we don't have it now. But we also don't see you. <clears throat> there it is. Okay. And then try okay. yep, just one more slide and we'll make sure it doesn't show okay. gray again. Sorry. Uh -huh. Perfect. Keep going. <laughs> Thanks, Dinara. Okay, so uh, Kyrgyz Republic um, at the moment is independent state in the heart of Central Asia. And we have area of 200,000 of square meters and population of about 6 million people. And um, representatives of about uh, 100 different uh, ethnic groups live in Kyrgyzstan of which 73% are Kyrgyz, uh, represent Kyrgyz ethnic. Um, and uh, in, on territory of Kyrgyzstan, there were three branches of the Great Silk Road in past. And Kyrgyz people are nomadic uh, people with an ancient history. According to one of the legend, uh, Kyrgyz tribes, uh, from, uh, came uh, here to Central Asia from the banks of the Siberian River in Esai, which is translated as Mother River, and uh, mixed with the local nomads. 
And the traditional culture of the Kyrgyz is all uh, in its manifestation, be it in the recipe of traditional cuisine, periods of hunting for wild animals, traditional medicine, the symbolism of the ornament or handicraft technologies is a reflection of the relationship between man and nature. And the close connection with the surrounding nature predetermined the cosmogonic ideas and beliefs of the ancient Kyrgyz pastoralists and hunters who uh, defied the forces of nature and worshipped the spirits of their ancestors. Among the Kyrgyz, the tribal social structure and along with the social Islam, the traditional worshipping the spirits of ancestors has been preserved to this day. As a rule, the Kyrgyz begin any good deed or business with an appeal to the heavenly Lord Tengirata and the fourth mother of all life on earth, Umayene, with a request for a blessing, Akbata. Here you can see some uh, uh, cemetery, uh, old, old form of cemetery, which uh, remind uh, some uh, Buddhist uh, tombs. Uh, and for the Kyrgyz, the felt making has ancient roots and it's known to exist as early as the first millennium BC, when a variety of product processing methods and patterns evolved. Production of felt in Kyrgyzstan has developed continuously over centuries. And here you can see in the left the Kyrgyz felt carpet with deer motif and craftsmen in the process of felt making in 20th century. And in the right, you can see detail of the felt carpets of Pazaric culture from Altai, Siberia of fourth, third centuries BC. You can see the, uh, how close these uh, ornamental motifs uh, between uh, these two cultures. And ornamental motifs reflect aesthetic uh, perception by the masters of the surrounding nature and social environment as well as cosmogony representations of the Kyrgyz about the universe. The ornament often performs the sacred function of a talisman. Here you can see uh, the yurt uh, uh, of Kyrgyz uh, tribes living in uh, Gap. It is uh, mountains of Tajikistan. Here are some slides uh, which I wanted to show you these uh, words about this uh, reflection of uh, reflection of uh, ornaments uh, the surrounding nature. You can see uh, how uh, works of craftsmen um, repeat uh, forms and the color combination and palette of nature. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, Kyrgyz people use uh, felt uh, in all uh, um, uh, cases of their life. Uh, they cover yurt, the dwelling, uh, portable dwelling by felt. Uh, they decorate uh, uh, interior uh, inside the yurt or houses by felt. They put uh, felt into the floor. And here in the uh, right side, you can see how they uh, keep uh, the felt uh, uh, folded uh, on the uh, boxes inside the home. In former times, nomadic tribes or on white felt raised the leader. Uh, of the uh, nation proclaiming his right to reign. And the fine ceremonial clothes of the Kyrgyz uh, and the male headdress, Akkalpak, you can see on these uh, guys, uh, are still uh, sewn from thin white felt. And the child took his first steps on felt. The body was wrapped in felt during burial. Uh, the ashes of black felt were sprinkled on uh, wounds and using it as an antiseptic. And we have saying, 
uh, Kyrgyz is born on fell. And protection of environment in using its sources as raw materials for the craft production is an important part of the traditional knowledge of Kyrgyz people. And here you can see uh, raw material of Kyrgyz felt makers. Uh, it is wool of the local sheep. And here you can see uh, on the top, you can see uh, Kyrgyz uh, merino uh, sheep breed. And in down, you can see our local sheep, uh, which is good for um, carpets, but uh, not usable for uh, more fine uh, products. And in right side, you can see our market uh, of wool. And uh, as for uh, natural dyes, uh, at the present days, uh, people mostly use uh, chemical dyes, but uh, we uh, try to come back and uh, to teach people to use local plants and minerals uh, to revive uh, traditional knowledge uh, about dyeing by natural uh, resources. And here uh, you see processing of wool from the very beginning. And that was seen by you by uh, uh, on that uh, film, video film. It is very hard work and it is mostly done by women uh, actually, but men also take part, uh, but mostly when they uh, work with uh, breeding uh, sheep and cutting wool and uh, making hard work, but uh, the main work of pressing and uh, making carpets it is done by women. And thickness of that uh, felt is different. It can be from uh, very thick, uh, very thin uh, from, uh, you know, 0 0.3 uh, centimeters to uh, one and a half centimeters, you know, depends on of the purpose. Uh, and um, what is done to um, promote uh, felt? It is uh, uh, some NGOs and uh, uh, some NGOs made uh, prom promoting uh, felt making on TV program and publications. And as uh, Mary said, already we published a book, Shirdak, uh, which you can buy actually. It, we have this uh, electronic version of this Shirdak. Uh, it is 300. 60 pages and it is kind of encyclopedia. At this moment, it is kind of encyclopedia of Shirdak. And, uh, you know, if to talk about our traditional uh, felt making, so we have uh, most, uh, most known uh, forms of our felt felting. It is uh, felt, uh, felt carpet, it is alakis. It is pressed uh, felt carpet when uh, this ornament is uh, put by on the uh, wool uh, basic by uh, also again uh, carded wool. Uh, and then it is pressed, it is rolled and pressed. Usually it is this car kind of carpet, it's uh, from two, two to five uh, meters. It depends on the size of this uh, straw mat, which is uh, which cannot be wider than two meters. But um, uh, that is a typical uh, or classical uh, size of this uh, carpet. And here you can see some process of uh, uh, making felt uh, alakis carpet and some. Ornaments. You can see it is like aquarelle. Uh, it is uh, forms very uh, not not strict. It's very um, uh, like watercolor. And uh, the labor of children is used also here very much because uh, they uh, they are involved in this uh, work and also not only children of this family but also from neighborhood uh, and relatives are invited also.
and uh, this felt carpet uh, can be done in one day. You can see it should be done in one day, actually. You can see if uh, all raw materials are ready. Uh, you can see here uh, a lakis uh, of uh, just neutral uh, felt, not dyed. And here, uh, this is from south part of Kyrgyzstan. Color combination is very bright. So it is a very different, different uh, design. You can see depends of uh, the region and the taste of producer. And another kind of felt uh, carpet, it is shirdak. Shirdak, uh, it is a uh, um, technique, uh, mosaic technique. And actually in this uh, carpet, uh, people use several, uh, several different techniques, but uh, preferably it is mosaic technique and uh, um, um, quilting in the end. And, uh, uh, you know, this is when uh, you've seen this uh, movie, it was told that uh, local population is not able to buy it at the moment because it is quite expensive. Yes, at this moment, uh, the squ one square meter uh, of Shirda costs from 50 to 120 dollars per square meter. So, which is uh, actually uh, expensive and uh, the tradition to give this this shirdak as a part of dowry to daughter, it is uh, kept by only by uh, masters ca who can produce. But in uh, citizens already uh, lost that uh, knowledge, and only women from countryside they produce these shirdaks and they can give uh, to their daughters this uh, dowry, but not citizens. And citizens, only uh, very wealthy people can buy the shirdak for their daughters. And to be honest, uh, unfortunately, young generation does not value it. And uh, they, uh, not everybody can uh, accept uh, kind of uh, gift, uh, you know, as it should be. <laughs> Done and here you can see uh, the process of dyeing. You know we invite um, we invite uh, our masters, uh, knowledgeable masters uh, who have uh, knowledge uh, how to dye, how to use uh, natural uh, plants uh, to dye uh, felt and wool, and they teach a younger generation of craftsmen. And here you can see another process of making felt, of making uh, this shirdak. And if uh, this uh, alaki is, uh, is done in one day, so shirdak uh, can be produced by one woman uh, for several, uh, during several months, because she is doing usually it is alone. And, uh, um, or uh, if it is done by a group of women at the present days for touristic markets. So it takes about uh, two months. And uh, if she will do it alone, it will take about seven, eight months to make one shirt deck uh, by size uh, two to five meters. And here you can see some um, samples of shirdak. You can see how di uh, how different patterns it is. And here you can see not only mosaic technique, but in the border you can see applique. You know, this is applique technique also. And um, here uh, you can see very typical, uh, typical uh, composition, uh, negative positive, we call it. Uh, when uh, you see it is a copy, uh, it is just switched uh, this ornament. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, this, uh, any ornament has a kind of information which can be written. And you know that is very interesting. When we've been in America, in uh, Bolat's kitchen, uh, which Mary mentioned, 
uh, in 2014, I guess, 14, I guess. Uh, so we made uh, alakis, not shirdak, but alakis. And uh, when people asked what it means, uh, we made first alakis and I explained uh, meaning of that alakis. It was blessing, it was about uh, some good wishes, etc. And second one, when we did it uh, before we left, uh, so I uh, requested from participants, you know, it was 80 people and they all helped to press it, to make patterns, etc. And I asked them, please, you must uh, uh, decode it. And they tried, they tried three times, but in third time they did it. And that was amazing because they read the carpet and the um, you know uh, wishes which was uh, in inside that uh, patterns which I uh, made uh, and they read it very perfectly. So you can see here another kind of uh, design which is called tabakcha patterns uh, plates plate plate uh, plate uh, pattern. And this is this uh, design is called uh, um, oh I forgot the, the word oblak cloud cloud yes this is also interesting pattern in uh, in the middle you can see also a plique. Uh, if around it is mosaic, so inside on the black uh, on the black basic, you can see um, multicolored uh, triangles uh, made in applique uh, technique. And this is very interesting sample. You know, it is done uh, in the only in few in three villages in the border with China. And I think that you can see the influence of Chinese culture here because this kind of shirdak is called uh, butterfly shirdak, you know, and there are some exotic flowers and uh, butterflies and fruits. This is also a very interesting shirdak, which is with uh, animal, deers and eagle hunting uh, hunting uh, deer and this is also another kind of uh, technique uh, which is not cut it is uh, this uh, threads are the patterns made by threads uh, which is put on uh, the black basic but uh, shirdak is not cut this is this belong only to south part of kyrgyzstan and here is uh, also a very interesting thing that uh, craftsmen as uh, all over the world, they never like to throw uh, any piece of felt because it is done by uh, so much uh, troubles and uh, it is, uh, they cannot, uh, they cannot throw it away. So, and they use each piece and make kurak, uh, kurak shirdak, uh, which means uh, patchwork shirdak. And this is very interesting shirdaks uh, with these uh, images of animals. And uh, people usually uh, not put them on the floor, they uh, put it on the uh, wall, you know, to keep uh, room uh, warm. This is very good and uh, they don't uh, put step on it. And here uh, there are some patterns. You can see very different patterns uh, where you can see some motifs of flowers or animals or horns. And uh, here also some, um, you know, corner, which is also very interesting. And here you can see uh, tree of life, which is used uh, in this uh, patterns and here uh, some um, this is uh, how people uh, you know every uh, this pe uh, this uh, felt carpet should be uh, saved uh, in summertime they people put it on sun 
uh, it's against uh, moth, uh, moth, and in winter time they also put on snow, and in summer time for sun. So they, they, that is a way how they protect uh, this wool of moth. Uh, why we um, applied to UNESCO? Because, you know, in 2010, it was such difficult situation with felt carpets. So people started forgetting uh, this value of our heritage and they uh, started, uh, you know, to, to make very bad attention to these carpets. And then we decided to uh, try to inscribe it into UNESCO list of intangible cultural heritage. And uh, we prepared this, we filled this nomination file and uh, it went, it was inscribed. And uh, that helped much, very much. Uh, and uh, because this inclusion uh, of these two carpets into this list uh, kind of uh, for our local people became uh, kind of uh, recognition of the value of Kyrgyz traditional culture by the world society, you know, and uh, that helped to activate our craftsmen and people who are really um, you know, promote uh, crafts and uh, activate this craft movement in all regions of Kyrgyzstan. Uh, you know, the mostly these uh, carriers of the felt traditions uh, are rural women and uh, particularly living in countryside, and the typical portrait of the felt carpet maker is rural woman in her age of mid of 50s. Um, and they work individually or in co-ops. Usually they uh, unite in co-ops or within family groups. Here you see very famous our uh, craftsmen uh, who are known all over the country and as the best felt uh, Produces felt carpet produces, and of course we try to uh, we try to transfer uh, the knowledge to younger generation uh, through workshops uh, and international organizations uh, support us in this when we make trainings uh, to invite and to. Uh, the best uh, producers. And here you can see Mary <laughs> and uh, how she came in Kyrgyzstan uh, in a little slide in, in down. Uh, it is Bolat's Kitchen in New Mexico. Uh, it's last year when our three girls went there to finish our shirdak, which we started so many years ago. And at last they finished this next uh, last year. Uh, you know, since 2010, uh, in Kyrgyzstan, there is a felt carpets market, special, special Shirdak uh, festival, which is organized annually in Adbashi or Narin province, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which is recognized as the best Shirdak producers area. And all people who love Shirdak or who would like to make, uh, to buy or to make connections uh, or who make uh, business with Shirdak, they come there. It is every June, end of June, we have that felt Shirdak, uh, Shirdak festival. And here you can see uh, some showrooms and uh, shops outside of Kyrgyzstan. Of course, you can see here how it is transformed a little bit, became, you know, when we, we are laughing that, you know, uh, foreign buyers, they um, uh, are tired of the um, diversity of our patterns. They prefer one pattern. <laughs> <laughs> or at least two colors, not more. 
<laughs> you know, uh, it is difficult to accept all this uh, diversity of um, color combinations and uh, uh, multiple colored uh, palette, uh, which Kyrgyz like. So here you can see very um, simplified uh, versions of Kyrgyz uh, carpets uh, in different countries of the world. And I'd like to talk a little bit about our designers. You know, uh, when I said that Allah Keys disappeared, yes, as carpet, but uh, it didn't disappear. It doesn't disappear as technique. This Allah Keys technique uh, is developed, uh, but in different forms. Here you can see very famous our brand, Seven Sisters. Uh, and uh, which is known uh, internationally. And uh, the leader of this group, Farzana Sharshimbiva, the designer, she works with uh, uh, American designer. Mm. Oh. oh, sorry, I forgot her name. A very famous American designer. Um, not, sorry, maybe I will remember later. <laughs> You can see her tunics uh, and uh, dress, uh, which she made in uh, technique uh, a la keys and nuno felt with silk and felt. Here you can see also some uh, contemporary designers who work with felt. It is Burul Mambetova and Altena Osmoeva, uh, who use this felt by different ways. And they are also demonstrated in different uh, fashion shows, not only in Kyrgyzstan, but also all over the world. And they are, uh, have uh, uh, prices. Uh, uh, for example, in the middle, this uh, Burul Mambetova, she uh, got uh, Grand Prix in Paris. And uh, this in, in two uh, left and right, uh, you can see some felt coats of Altenai who got uh, silver prize in Milano. And here you can see also other, other designers, uh, different designers who made some uh, interior uh, products of felt uh, with some embroidery or uh, in Nuno felt, some accessories, fashion accessories. In left side, you can see family who made this felt product. They are three years, mother and two daughters. They, made everything from felt, but uh, mixed with uh, textile. And here also you see different techniques, not only it is all uh, made in uh, different techniques, uh, dipping felt into dyes or patchwork, uh, embroidered and uh, toys, dolls, and uh, interior and fashion design. And here you can see also some other uh, technique, uh, this uh, panno with animals like landscape with yurt and animals. It is very famous Kyrgyz uh, artist, Jumabai Umetov. He started working with felt in 70s when nobody of artists made it. And all artists laughed on him and they said, oh, you are artisan, not artist, you know, but uh, he made this huge panno. It is like seven meters uh, to four. And uh, he, at the moment, uh, he is one of the most known Kyrgyz uh, felt. This is, you can see, this is Alakiy's technique. And in down, you can see contemporary felt uh, composition, like felt graphic made of uh, felt and wool. And in, in the left side, you can see, uh, combination of felt with uh, cotton and uh, felt with uh, silver uh, of contemporary Kyrgyz artist Altena Osmoeva. And what is done by our government? Of course, our government tries to do uh, something uh, to preserve and to protect, uh, but to be honest, uh, not, uh, not much. And most of things which is done, uh, it is done by craftsmen themselves or uh, NGOs. 
uh, with the support of international uh, organizations. But our government uh, received some laws and uh, um, we hope uh, that uh, at the moment uh, they became uh, much more uh, much more flexible to you know to understand problems of uh, craftsmen and the most uh, difficult thing the you know what is really should be changed it is that this knowledge of craftsmen uh, in uh, this knowledge and skills are not included into the curr curriculum of the formal art and culture institutions in kyrgyzstan it is uh, this tra uh, transferring uh, of knowledge is going only in family or uh, on trainings uh, uh, which is done by NGOs, but not uh, not uh, in formal insti governmental institutions, you know, like art colleges, etc. And um, so, and uh, we hope that that will be that will be changed much, must be changed much. Uh, so, and here you can see also, I mentioned about this uh, uh, Grand Prix in Paris. So this collection was, uh, got this Grand Prix. It was in 2013, probably. It was done by uh, our um, two craftsmen uh, designers. They both are craftsmen and felt makers and designers. It is Burul Mambetova and Jenbek uh, Kuzi Nurzat. Uh, so, and uh, this is their show on our uh, festival Oimo. Again, it's also annual festival of traditional crafts, culture, and uh, crafts and culture of Kyrgyz, uh, which is, which we organize every year in the end of July, beginning of August in Kyrgyzstan, where you are very, very welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Inara, that, yes. Do you want me to show that video? Yes. Uh, and at the end of this, yes, at the end, uh, thank you, uh, Jessa. I'd like yes. to ask you if you can show uh, this course. at the end of my presentation, this uh, short video of uh, the exhibition. Um, of Altenai Osmoeva, Blessing Yurt. Perfect, I will show that and then we will take questions. Whoops. Dinara, I think you are sh sharing your screen with the video. There we go. Do you have voice, sound? 
We don't, but the images are beautiful. That's all right. Okay. Thank you okay. very much. Are you ready? I'm sorry to... that it was no oh. sound. It was so beautiful sound. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be ready for a few questions, Dinara? Sorry. Are you ready for a few questions? Yes. Yes. Sure. We've got some here. Yes, sure. Um, sure. I think uh, uh, we can start. <laughs> People are wondering about your book. And wondering one, if it's possible to get a hard copy and also how to access the ebook. Um, uh, so how to access the ebook, I, I will send uh, to Jess uh, uh, information how to do it, okay? Okay. Uh, and, that and about, Uh, I, I I didn't hear. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to get a a physical book uh, in this yes, country yes. Mm -hmm. to somehow buy a physical book? Yes, a physical yes, book. Yes, but yeah. of course uh, it is possible. But uh, I don't know. It it is very heavy. It is three and a half kilo or two and a half kilo something very heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if because it is very expensive to post it you know mm -hmm. if it will be uh, i don't know if it is not a problem so if someone wanted yes. to spend the money to to buy it that yeah. way is there a way is it possible yes yes okay yes could you send we still Jessa? have that books not okay. much but we still have could you send Jessa the information about that? Yeah. Okay, um, great. And then we have a question here about patterns, about the OIMO. They're wondering if patterns are, um, if they're passed down from older generations um, or if, if the pattern makers are creating new patterns and how that works. Mary, I don't hear, it is oh. very, silent is, Shoot. Yes, now it's good. Much Is better. Is it better? Yes. Okay. Yes, 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 now I hear. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So we, we have a question about patterns in the rugs yes. and they're wondering yes. if they're passed down from older generations or if the pattern makers are creating new patterns and how that works. Uh, of course it came from all the generation, you know, because Z patterns, they, um, you know, the only thing uh, that meaning of that patterns is not uh, is not so known at the moment. You know, not everybody can read it. Uh, and um, the best pattern makers they uh, are copied by others by other producers. But of course, it is done. Um, mm, how to say, I, I believe that it is kind of genetic, genetic, uh, genetic memory. Uh, but uh, some, some uh, the best craftsmen, they of course create, every, every craftsman creates something new, but only the best craftsmen create something really, really uh, innovative, I would say. 
uh, mostly they repeat the patterns I showed you. This is really extraordinary, most of them, you know, because mm -hmm. we made the research and we choose uh, the best uh, patterns to. Um, I used the best patterns to show you, but there are a lot of patterns which just repeat others, not, mm -hmm. not necessarily. Uh, I would say not every shirdak is something really unique, you know, mm -hmm. by patterns. Mm -hmm. They repeat each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's some people here who they're interested in going to the festival in June and they're wondering where it is. Okay, I will also uh, send. Uh, I will also send information about two festivals. Uh, first, it is Shirdak Festival in Narin, in mountain area, where you can see the, that kind of huge uh, square, with, uh, you know, covered by felt rugs mm -hmm. all over. So, mm -hmm. and um, where you can buy uh, shirdaks or you can make photos of these producers and talk to them, get interview, et cetera, uh, face to face, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, you can ask uh, pattern, about patterns, et cetera. Uh, it, it is in June, uh, mid of June. Usually I will send the exact uh, date and time okay. to Jessa. Uh, and another festival, it is traditional, a festival of traditional, uh, traditional uh, culture, uh, crafts and culture, which includes not only shirdaks, but also all different kinds of uh, Kyrgyz traditional crafts like embroidery, uh, patchwork, uh, uh, wood, uh, leather, etc. Not only from Kyrgyzstan, but also from all Central Asian countries, because that is an uh, international uh, festival, which is happening in the end of July. Last, it starts uh, at uh, last Friday of July, and uh, um, up to the end of the first week of uh, August. Mm -hmm. It is two weeks festival, uh, which is in Bishkek and in Isekul Lake. So is this the World know. Nomad Games? No, no, no. no, no. Okay. It is, okay. it is a traditional, it is a festival of traditional crafts. Okay. International uh, festival of traditional crafts, which was started in 2006. <laughs> and it's going on every year. Mm -hmm. So are there similar traditions? People are wondering if there's similar traditions than in other nearby countries to the rug making traditions in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, no, uh, this kind of rugs, uh, you know, this uh, Alaki's uh, technique, you can find in every culture, you know, all over the world. I don't know any culture where people do not do, do not produce that kind of uh, felt rugs, you know, Georgia, Ireland, uh, Sweden, wherever, you know, it is all people all ethnics, uh, they, they made such carpets, felting. But a lucky is, is only a few ethnics um, made it. Uh, in Central Asia, it is Kyrgyz and Kazakh. Kazakh oh. uh, traditional carpets, uh, like Shirdak, they call it Sirmak. Even name is similar, but uh, much less than Kyrgyz. Kyrgyz made, Kyrgyz Shirdak are much richer. You know, when we made that book, Shirdak book, we counted 13 kinds of compositions uh, of Shirdak, you know, which is really uh, unique and uh, very rich. And uh, in Kazakhstan, it is not so much uh, diversity of Shirdak. And also Mongols, they made similar, they made similar um, tradition uh, and their carpets, also felt carpets, uh, quilted carpets uh, of felt, they call it uh, Shirtik. You see, Shirdak, Sirmak and Shirtik. <laughs> uh, very, very close, you know, but they don't cut it. They made patterns uh, <laughs> by uh, quilting <laughs> on white felt, you know, <laughs> and uh, but that their patterns are not like ours. They are geometrical, geometrical <laughs> and remind some, um, you know, Chinese, 
Chinese pattern, I would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you mentioned um, earlier that the alakis are no longer being made. Um, I hope that not. I hope that people come back uh, to this technique uh, to be uh, to use uh, at home mm -hmm. because it is very healthy mm -hmm. and that is really good for children to play on. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but you know, um, and it is not so expensive. It is not so expensive, but it's not fashionable at the moment. That mm -hmm. is only, mm -hmm. and the quality. It must be very good quality of mm -hmm. that. You know. Uh, for example, Kyrgyz uh, felt carpets, felted carpets, alakis, they are, um, how to say, not so, not so hard, they are soft a little bit, so that's why this uh, the wool is going out, you know, and that is, uh, you know, difficult mm. to keep, uh, you know, in terms of sanitation, it's not maybe uh, so good. Uh, but you know the quality of the same technique uh, made by Turkmen, for example. Mm. Turkmen felted carpets, alakis. You know, in alakis technique, mm -hmm. they are much harder and much better by quality. Mm -hmm. Maybe if Kyrgyz carpet will be done of such quality, you know, mm. maybe that would be that helpful uh, to be more marketable. Mm -hmm. They could start coming back. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Um, let's see here. I have a question here about um, wool. They're wondering if the Kyrgyz government, if they support people who are raising um, sheep and producing wool, or if people are on their own to do that. Unfortunately, I cannot say that government supporting people uh, who try to breed our, uh, you know, Kyrgyz, uh, uh, merino wool you know we have uh, at the moment we have such a situation here that uh, actually in 19 in 1939 it was breeded uh, kyrgyz wool uh, kyrgyz sheep breed breed of sheep mm -hmm. uh, which was called uh, kyrgyz merino Kyrgyz Merino breed, you know, mm -hmm. but then because it should be, you know, that work of breeding, it should not be stopped. It should mm -hmm. be continued because it takes it takes a lot of job and uh, time. You know, when this uh, collapse of Soviet Union happened, uh, Kyrgyz people uh, ate all these <laughs> ships with fine wool <laughs> and only local uh, local wool with uh, not fine uh, uh, only local ships with uh, not fine wool uh, left you know mm -hmm. uh, their, their wool is good for carpets yes but mm -hmm. not good for other fine things like dress or uh, you know, as a as a as a interior uh, products or uh, any other any other products, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, even those uh, wool which we have, they are sold by farmers in advance to Chinese collectors, you know, uh -huh. traders. They pay, you know, in one year in in advance, you know, they uh -huh. come and pay. And the farmers, they are not interested to sell to craftsmen just a little part of that uh, wool because it's not interesting for them. That's why yeah. our farmers uh, have no enough good uh, materials. And they even import uh, wool from other countries, like from Ireland or even Australia. You know, oh. that is a very strange situation. That's why the price of products are you know, <laughs> very high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, there's interest here in purchasing Shirdaks and people are wondering if there are any organizations um, that are good to support, any that are better than others, how to figure out from this country, how can you support rug makers in Kyrgyzstan? You know, at the moment we have um, 
we have different uh, programs supported by GIZ, for example, or uh, Helvetas, it is Swiss uh, organization, yes, Helvetas, uh, which supported uh, to um, Shirdak producers, you know, and to market their products. But I think that um, the best way is uh, to develop this market, you know, mm -hmm. because market, uh, if it will be market, so this art of Shirdak will be alive. Mm -hmm. So if tourism will be developed, uh, this carpet producers, Shirdak producers will produce it mm -hmm. for tourists at, at least. But you know what is interesting, this interest to Shirdak uh, of the rest of the world and the, you know, because Shirdak became very um, kind of, uh, very popular in interior decorating decoration as interior decoration in some um, other in some foreign countries in italy for example yeah uh, and uh, that uh, impressed our local population you know and it became fashionable here in kyrgyzstan because it is popular outside you know that mm -hmm. kind of influence uh, we can see and uh, it depends of market if market mm -hmm. will be developed of this uh, felt carpet so and uh, it will be alive but yeah. i think that i make a, a report to unesco uh, about this progress of uh, uh, this felt making uh, felt carpets in kyrgyzstan uh, and uh, i would say that we can already say that it's not disappearing it is it it can be developed it is not under that danger to disappear at all you know mm -hmm. it can be developed at the moment if in case if tourism will go on mm -hmm. yeah it's hard sometimes when you're within a culture to see the treasure that you have it helps to see it through other people's eyes yeah mm -hmm. um let's see here so many questions um where should we go someone is asking here about the those mats you were talking about that the ala keys are made in and they're curious yeah. what they're made of um and if they're handmade and if so, who makes them? Yeah, that map is done of the uh, kind of straw. It is very thin, um, thin straw. Uh, it is local and that straw is not empty inside. It is full inside <laughs> and it is uh, only, only um, a couple of millimeters uh, uh, by diameter. <laughs> and we call it chi. And it is, uh, you know, it is about two meters by, you know, by long. And it should not be cut it. It should mm. not be cut it. It should be taken, you know, by hands from the, uh, when it is grow, because otherwise if it will be cut, uh, it, it will not grow. And uh, mm. at the moment it is uh, in red book it's very difficult to find out mm. and it is only uh, around this equal lake you can find it at the moment uh, and in not not all uh, over kyrgyzstan you know mm -hmm. so and um, but that is traditional way to make felt on that map you know mm. uh, but at the moment in those places where there is no such uh, straw and that straw mats it's woven you know they kind of by uh, this um, thread uh, cotton thread it is uh, woven uh, from that straw to make it, it mat you know it is usually uh, two meters to five or six meters you know enough to make one carpet or one piece of felt uh, white or black you know Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in those uh, places where there is no such a uh, straw, people use um, very um, material like brisant or very strong, very strong um, uh, 
piece of cotton, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why you were saying the alakis can only be two meters. Yes, why? that's why. That's yes, the, that's why. That's yes, the that's of why. The and also, it depends on the size of the yurt, you know. Mm. In uh, usually, uh, if you usually it is, uh, it was one and ha normal or classical uh, size of such rocks, both alakis and shirdak was about one and a half meters to uh, three meters, something like that. But in sixties, when of Soviet time in 1960s, uh, when these collective farmers were developed and became rich, and when farmers started building bigger houses, not yurts, but they started living in houses, they, their wives started producing uh, much bigger shirdaks. Mm. Not mm. alakis. Alakis cannot be uh, mm. uh, changed because of the straw. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, sizes of shirdaks became much bigger from mm. two or two and a half even mm. to uh, five meters, even, you know, to three, uh, not three, but four meters. Wow. So, so two to four meters that became uh, normal size for such shirdak for house interior not for wow. yurt you know it depends mm -hmm. and now what is interesting people start producing um, uh, round shirdaks because they made uh, yurts uh, for uh, export <laughs> they export uh, yurts and uh, it is more um, it is more uh, convenient to have one shirdak uh, in one yurt so round shirdak so mm. it could be it, of course, it is uh, cut it uh, for two or four pieces, you know, mm -hmm. usually for two pieces, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, it consists of two half uh, of circle, you know, mm. but that is uh, more, more, maybe looks more contemporary or mm -hmm. more convenient, maybe right. more convenient. Right. Depends on market again. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a bunch more questions here, but it's time to wrap things up. So I'm wondering, Dinar, if there's anything else that you want to share with us um, in closing before we head out here. OK. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, this thank was you, awesome. Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie, for your Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dinara, Mary, thank you so much this was a wonderful this mm -hmm. was just wonderful to hear about cultural traditions and geography and so many of the things that just cross um across the world in the necessity of preserving craft traditions to kind of understand who we've been and who we're becoming so Dinara, thank you so much thank you so much to your tech support as well <laughs> uh, and thank Mary, you also thank you so for much. giving opportunity, for giving me chance to share my knowledge uh, and information with other people who love, uh, <clears throat> love uh, felt art of felt making mm -hmm. all over the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, as yeah. I noted, yeah. we'll post this recording, and it sounds like um, Dinara will send me a few uh, resources about finding the book and possibly some places. Um, that are export responsibly exporting Sri Dak. So I will uh, share that via email, likely next week um, with everybody signed up for this particular session. So Mary, Dinara, thank you very much. Uh, I hope I see many of you in about a half an hour for our presentation on Sami textile traditions of the Kola Peninsula with Tina Sokina. So here's hoping the internet continues to cooperate with us uh, <laughs> this time from Russia in Oh, just a little while. So Dinata, thank you very much. And very oh, much our much noon much. presenter, Anmor Sanbo, wanted me to send her greetings to you. She would noted that you both have worked so much together <laughs> to preserve textile traditions and that you've met each other before. So <laughs> cool. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>